Good evening, Monarch fans, and welcome to another edition of Sports Talk with Rags here in Season 4, Episode 59, and tonight here with uh, Monarch Monday episode here with uh, Monarch alum uh, Jason Wade back on with us tonight. Uh, Jason, how you doing this evening? I'm doing good. How about yourself? Hey, I'm doing great, and I uh, appreciate you uh, coming back on. As I know here about uh, a year or so, uh, you and your dad uh, came on. So uh, definitely uh, definitely a cool connection here of uh, being part of the program where your dad played. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me. Looking forward to talking hoops and just uh... – having having fun on doing the show yes yes and uh so thanks again for coming on so let's uh let's start at the beginning i mean uh what uh growing up in richmond um did you play all sports or did you mainly just uh focus on basketball um so i i, I played a little bit of football and basketball and then did a little bit of track okay um was actually probably better at football as a little kid. Yeah. Um, the only thing was I hate being in the cold. And, <laughs> and football season is in – and they, they call it a, a, um, a fall sport, but it goes until it gets cold. So I couldn't be oh, yeah. cold anymore. Um, so yeah. I told my mom didn't want to do it, and she was like, all right, let's just take <laughs> the basketball. You know, that's the thing. And I've even, you know, with being a Western Branch of law, my – do something here with the uh, Western Branch football program. And that's what the coach talks about here. Here you practice in the summer, you play in the fall, but the ultimate goal in high school is to play for a state championship, which you're practicing Thanksgiving. And if you get to the state semis, you're playing in the first weekend in December. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Snow <laughs> on the ground, ground freezing cold. It, it just wasn't for me. And that's why um, my wife, Elizabeth, likes to go to more basketball games than football games because basketball, it's climate control. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah. I do not blame, I do not blame Elizabeth at all. Right. Hey, um, so as you were um, getting into getting into high school and uh, with concentrating on basketball, you know, then you know playing the um, playing the showcase circuit there with uh, AAU when um, high school season wasn't wasn't uh, when it wasn't the winter season. It was uh, it was all about playing AAU there in the uh summertime right yeah so that that's another reason why i kind of just wanted to stick to one sport um nowadays it seems like if you pick a sport they have you working out year round whether it's um seven on seven spring football in the off season of football or if it's a you travel ball during the off season of your high school season so um yeah i, I played high school at uh hanover it was my first high school no. And in the summer, I would play AAU. Um, I started with an AAU team called Team Richmond, and my dad was actually the coach. Um, okay. So a lot of good memories there. That's where I learned the basic fundamentals of the game under my dad and had a great time doing it. I'm sure he enjoyed it as well. And then as I moved up in age, I moved to a team called River City Rain, which is also located in Richmond, Virginia. Okay. Um, had some success there. Uh, got my name out there, and for my last year, I ended up playing with Boo Williams okay. and his EYBL team down here in Hampton, Virginia. So that that was a, a great experience. Yeah, and and really there in Hampton, I mean, if it wasn't for that Williamsburg Newport News traffic, I mean Richmond to Hampton, you don't have to cross a tunnel, but uh, right. but 60, 64. You know, especially there on the there on the weekends, you know, you you know, it's uh, but, uh, you know, that uh, with uh, Boo Williams, I mean, uh, you know, definitely, definitely go to uh, different 
different tournaments to get your name out there. For sure, for sure. And that that was really the big difference in, in changing AAU programs. Um, nothing against the other programs. They just simply don't get the same exposure that um, the EYBL does with playing with Boo Williams. Um, and that, that was a hard decision I had to make switching AAU teams, you know, playing with all my friends in Richmond that I've played with for years, um, getting to know the coaches that coach me. Um, and helped me get to the point where I got to be able to get my name out there to play for a team as good as Boo Williams. Um, so it was definitely a hard decision, but uh, they understood, um, and they they did nothing but support me. I, I'm still in contact with those coaches, um, and it, it, it turned out to be a, a great opportunity for me. Yeah, so when it was time, let's see, I guess, uh, I guess when you were approaching your junior year, I mean uh, – were you looking? Were you looking for rich for uh, you know VCU Richmond or or uh, ODU or were you just looking for some somewhere at in the college ranks to to play or did you have your mind set on some uh, schools? Um, honestly, it was a little bit of both, you know, growing up in Richmond, um, VCU basketball is a huge deal. Um, and then going to those games as a little kid, being in that atmosphere, being able to experience the havoc culture was, um, was very cool. Um, and I'm not gonna lie. I, I did, I did see myself if the opportunity presented itself going there, but, um, on the flip side, um, during the recruitment process, I also wanted to go to a school where I felt the most love and where I felt that I was wanted the most. And at the end of the day, that's, that's what I ended up doing. Yeah. Yes. And, uh, you know, the thing is, I mean, playing for playing for Jeff Jones and then playing, playing, playing for the same program as where, as where your dad was. I mean, it pro, you know, it's kind of, you know, twofold where you know here there's another generation of wade coming to be part of the monarch family absolutely it's definitely a cool thing and um what was even more cool about it like being his cool chill self he did he put no pressure on me picking his uh alma mater and neither did my mom my mom went here graduated from odu as oh. well um <laughs> You know, during the recruitment process, he let it be my own. He didn't try to interfere with anything. Um, and I know how much he loved this school. Uh, we would come down here to some games all the time. We would go to the Richmond Coliseum when they had the um, CAA conference tournaments there. So I had grown up watching ODU play, too. Um, and I saw that 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 um, type of atmosphere as well. Um, but I, I think it was cool how my dad didn't really interfere. He let me um you know kind of handled the the whole recruitment process as a as a young man and just gave me advice when I asked for it um but yeah it it, it worked out um you know during the recruitment process I, like I, I mentioned earlier just kind of ended up going picking the school that I felt wanted me the most and that that was coach Jones and coach Stiff and and Crisco and coach Richardson at the time and uh, Coach Jefferson, you know, uh, we would have 6 a.m. workouts every morning, and mm. they would be at all of them. So oh. versus the other schools who recruit me, some wasn't their fault. You know, they were they were far distances away. Right. But for them to wake up that early one and come down <laughs> 64 <laughs> with yeah. all that traffic <laughs> just to watch me work out at 6 a.m., you know, that, that, meant, that meant a lot to me. That, that showed me everything I needed to know. And then on top of that, coming on my visit, meeting the players that were already here, you know, BJ Stiff, Ahmad Caver, Aaron Carver, um, Marquise Godwin at the time, um, and, and numerous of others, you know, after, after that, it was definitely where I wanted to be. Right. And then, uh, you know, with, uh, with coming here and, uh, you know, then also here with, uh, you know, not being – not being too far, too far from home, and then you know playing William and Mary non-conference, you know, so uh, definitely, 
you know, definitely um, some uh, schools here where uh, your parents, you know, drive down to Williamsburg or, of course, you know, make that drive down to down to Chartway Arena. I know with I know with technology, you know, uh, ESPN plus a lot of uh, a lot of games are covered, but, you know, also picking a, a program here in Norfolk not not too far for your family to hop on the hop on the road and see you play in person absolutely and um you know for them getting to the games that wasn't the problem because they they basically came to every game i played as as an athlete whether it was texas florida okay um they hawaii yeah cayman islands virgin islands like they they always found a way to make it to my games but on the flip just me being homesick and being able to get home to see the rest of my my immediate family that weren't able to travel as much as my parents and my grandparents um, really meant the world to me. Um, You know, my family, we were close knitted. Um, We always hang out every Friday, every Friday night we have a cookout. Oh, cool. Having the ability to shoot down 64 uh, every Friday, if, if I was able to, to, just spend some time with them and kind of relax and get my mind off basketball and off school was, um, was a good thing for me. And I think it, it balanced the relationship of being a student athlete, which is not easy. And right. a, a, a kid. Yeah. And, and the other thing is, is, uh, you know, there, the pandemic, uh, it, injuries. I mean, so, uh, you know, um, just just talk about how you know the the grind of being a student athlete. Bal- you know, talk about early morning workouts, balance in school. You know, and just uh, just everything that uh, you dealt with there with your time at Old Dominion. All right. I mean, it's it's definitely a grind. You know, when you first get to campus. You know the guys you're playing with, but you don't really know them. Um, at the time, when you first start and that, that, that those first summer workouts, so you're kind of scared, you're kind of timid as a freshman, you're on edge, you don't really know what to expect. But at the same time, you're excited and thankful for the opportunity. Um, you you wake up those early summer mornings, um, you get a <laughs> workout in with, with the coach uh, of your position, then you go to class. And then you come back and have a team practice later in the day and then a lift at some point. Um, so it was definitely a grind. And then, you know, as we went on with COVID and, um, you know, the injuries, that added an extra layer of difficulty for me. Um, but like I said, the environment in which ODU provided and being close to home made that as easy as it could be for anybody who you kind of dealt with my situation. Um you know, I'm pretty sure COVID was hard for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, just having to be isolated, having to be um, not able to do your normal everyday activities, your normal routines. So it, it threw a lot of people off. But uh, I think just having the teammates I had at the time, having the coaches I had at the time, and then having my family um, really pushed me through. Um, it, it wasn't easy, you know, being away from the guys as they traveled. Um, and then I would have to stay back so I can do my physical therapy and uh, just be in, my, in the room alone. You know, all your roommates are gone for three, four days and you're just in the room, you know, doing homework, watching TV. Um, and that's where the family being close kind of played in. Um, they would shoot down and spend time with me. Um, so I wasn't alone th- during those times, kind of get my mind off, you know, the stresses of the injury and what um, – all that entailed but um it it was it wasn't easy but we made it work Uh, right and i i don't regret i don't wish anything was different i'm very happy where i am in life right now and i'm just thankful for the people who you know kind of stood behind me through the whole process um monarch nation did nothing but support show support and show love to me and my family during those times and um, I'm just very thankful for it all. Yeah, and then where where you are, you know, to uh, piggyback on where you are now. I mean, I mean, with being a 
a GA? Is it is it something that, you know, the last year of you being a student athlete, you know, you kind of you kind of talk to the current staff or do you kind of or do you kind of see, you know, where you want to get your masters and, you know, see what's open? How how does an opportunity come open to where you are now? You know, just um, like I said, touch, touching back on what I said, just uh, being around the people who love and support you, who wanted me at the school in the first place. Um, at the time when the year was finishing up last year, it was uncertain if I was going to have another year to play due to injury and due to COVID. Um, it turned out that I did. The NCAA like cleared everyone who had had that COVID season or had an injury during that, that I think six year time period was right. able to play another year. But me knowing like my body and myself, I, I wasn't physically able. Um, I wouldn't say able. I just think it was um, trying to think of the right word. I don't want to say a waste, right. but it would be kind of almost not helping the program. If we can get a, a player who is in, much better physical form than I was at the time to come in and take that scholarship spot and, uh, you know, help the team get back to the great success that we had had in the years. And um, I was totally okay with that. Um, I came to terms with that as the year. Coach Jones, Coach Jeff Jones at the time was like, maybe we can, you know, maybe get you a GA spot. um, And that way you'll be able to finish your master's that I had started the previous year before. Okay. um, I had mentioned we had a couple of couple conversations about what I wanted to do after basketball and coaching uh, definitely came up in the conversation. So it was a perfect opportunity to um, kind of get my, my foot in the coaching world and kind of learn and still be part of the team, which which I love. So. All right. Yeah. Yes. And and now with being part of Coach Mike Jones's staff, I mean, I know that he coached at DeMatha, but, you know, he's an Oh, to you alum. So, you know, so with you being in Richmond, um, did you, uh, did you know him uh, before here with uh, getting to be part of his uh, staff here with uh, being a GA? Uh, No, sir. So I did not know him personally. I have heard a bunch of great things about him uh, when he was hired. Um, And I would say to this point, he's lived up to all those great things. Um, He's a great person to kind of be under, kind of fall under his wing. And so, and so is Jeff Jones, you know, they, they, their styles are different. Um, Both care about their players. Both are very passionate about winning. Um, But I, I would say in my benefit, it was, it was, helpful to kind of come in the coaching world under a new coach who didn't know me that I wasn't familiar with Um, because it kind of got me out of my comfort zone right you know me and coach Jones Jeff Jones have known each other for forever Uh, not forever but a long time six years right Right. (laughs) so going into the work environment with him I feel like it would almost be kind of like not work it would be kind of you know we're we 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 know each other. We're just <laughs> right. So coming under Mike Jones, right. it kind of brought a sense of okay. Let me prove myself. Let me let me let me show him I know the game. Let me show him that I can learn. That I'm a fast learner. That I can um, relate to him and his new coaching staff that he brought in. Uh, I can relate to the players that he brought in, and I think long term is going to help me in the professional world like it's getting me ready to you know step into uh, another job opportunity where i've had that experience of coming in and meet being around all new co-workers and Mm -hmm. um just trying to be as professional as possible um and learning and and trying to win basketball games right yes and uh you know not only with uh the staff that he's built but then having another um ODU alum and um and his uh his teammate there uh Odell you know uh right. coming back and being part of uh of the coaching staff 
Right, right. You know, that that's that speaks for itself. You know, anybody who has worn that ODU jersey, I already consider as family. Um, you know, we've all been out there on the court fighting for the same thing under the same university. And um, you know, those guys know knows what it takes to win. You know, they they won here um and they they know how to how to get it done. And I'm very thankful to be under them and the rest of the coaching staff. But like you said, um for them to be alumni speaks volumes. Um, it shows how much ODU University has impacted the young student athletes' lives as they grown up and got into their work as professions that they were, you know, didn't hesitate to come back to work for the ODU, for the, ODU the, the program that they went to. And uh, I feel the same way about it. Um, and I'm just, I'm just very happy to, be able to work with these guys and try to, you know, essentially win and get ODU back to the the powerhouse that it was back in the day. Yeah, and, you know, and then also I know with Elizabeth and I being season ticket holders and we've gone to the uh, Monarch dinner that was, you know, off of Hampton Boulevard there at the uh, Norfolk uh, Yacht Club and a little bit, you know, there was mingling uh, there at the beginning, but then it was pretty much a sit-down dinner. You know, what the um, athletic department did last Wednesday evening, you know, a little bit more informal setting. And, um, you know, there in the Blue Room there at Chartway Arena, I mean, I know that I had a, a situation at the house, so I didn't even know if I could be able to make it. but. You know, once I um, once I made it, I mean, at first there were no there were no empty seats. I mean, yeah. so uh, you know, Ted Alexander does a great job uh, emceeing and uh, you know, and then being a broadcaster there of uh, ODU football and ODU men's basketball. But there was there was a great crowd there to uh, uh, support the program there last Wednesday. Absolutely. And to touch on Ted being a great MC, he's one of the best, you know, tip of the hat to Ted at like one of the best. But um, yeah, like you said, um, it was a lot of people in there. We were thankful for every person that came and showed up and showed love and wanted to meet the Monarchs. You know, you can feel the excitement in the air for this upcoming season. And, you know, a lot of that goes to, you know, like we talked about, Coach being an alumni and then Odell Hodge coming back being alumni. And then the, the the guys that we recruited who are all good players and even more importantly, good guys off the court. Um, and I'm sure that the fans sense that when they, they got a chance to mingle and meet, meet these guys. Um, so we're excited. I know a lot of people are excited. It was, it was a great event. Um, shout out to the ODAF of OU who uh, put the event on. They did a great job, um, and we, we're excited. We're excited to get get things rolling. Yes. Now, with being a GA, do you do you get with the uh, the guards, or do you have um, a set area of what you are working on, or you know breaking down? film of the opponents once the regular season um, starts or, uh, you know, what are your uh, duties? Um, you know, that that's kind of the very cool thing about Mike Jones. He understands that I want to learn as much as possible when it comes to the basketball world, right. um, whether it's on the court instruction, whether it's the breaking down the film to prepare a scout to present to the team so we can be prepared to play the team the following day. Um yeah. He hasn't put me in a quote unquote box of, hey, you're just doing this. Right. He's kind of let me float under all the different coaches and their window of what they bring to the table. And um, it's been a great experience. I've, I've been able to do a little bit of everything. I've been able to get on the court with the players and help them skill develop. I've been able to cut film and help create scouting reports. I've been able to. Um, help out ops, you know, Matt Hamilton with ops and like just setting up how we're going to run game days and how the, the jerseys need to be hung up and, and how 
we want to show recruits campus when they come on campus. You know, I've, I've been involved in a little bit of everything and I'm, I'm more than grateful that I'm, I have these guys to learn everything from. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the thing with, uh, I know that uh, men and women's basketball has been a staple there for old dominion, but you know, you bring in recruits now with having a football program. I mean, uh, you know, the fall's busy with probably bringing in recruits here for home football games. Absolutely. Absolutely. And um, these past three home, I think they've had three home games now. Yeah. Um, at every single one, and they have loved the atmosphere over there at um, at the stadium. Um, and we're we're a, we're glad that we have that to show recruits to. Um, it kind of gives them a feel for what the fan support is here um, at the school and what the student engagement is here at the school. You know, the student section was packed. The yeah. the fan sections were packed. Um, and that's a good that's a good look for for the program and trying to get good players in here that um, are excited to play at the college level and play in front of thousands of fans. So it's uh it's a it's great. Yeah, yeah, and even with uh, before the uh, before the tech home game and before the parking lots uh, open for the tailgaters. I mean, even that that one hour uh, workout session, you know, for uh, for the fans and I know that Elizabeth and I you know went to that uh workout session so uh definitely definitely here been some opportunities here for the here for the fans here to uh you know go go out and see how the um how the team's been working and getting ready for the 24-25 season Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yeah. A lot of hours put in. Just can't wait to get out there and um, show what we've been working on. Yeah. Yes. And I know they're, uh, you know, uh, they're on Columbus Day. You know, Elizabeth working in banking, me working with the government. You know, uh, they're uh, caught the tail end of uh, tail end of practice. And like my text said to you earlier, you know, we have been season ticket holders, but, you know, with knowing Mike and Stacy and Odell a little bit and getting to know, you know, uh, a little bit of the team, some more definitely uh, nice here to uh, go on out and catch the final minutes of practice there the, uh, there the other day. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It was a good time, and we, we enjoyed having you guys come through. Well, thanks. Uh, I know that uh, Elizabeth and I were uh, definitely, um, definitely looking forward to. Uh, let's see, uh, November fourth here as uh, just uh, just around the corner for the uh, for the uh, not only the season opener but the home opener there against uh, Buffalo and uh, ready to ready to see the uh, team uh, open up the season. Absolutely, absolutely, and we've led the conference in attendance for the past yeah. ten plus years or so. So I'm excited to have everybody back in Chartway. I'm excited for our players to see what that environment is like. You know, that's a big recruiting pitch that we give to recruits that come on campus. You know, we have the best fans in the conference, and y'all never fail to let us down. And we 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 appreciate that from the bottom of our hearts. That, that's big time stuff. Well, thanks, and 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 that's the thing. Like the last couple of years, I mean, the uh, social media comments, you know, about about with uh, leading in attendance. You know, I guess I guess I was just showing my age. It's like it's like, hey, y'all. Ever since uh, Chartway has has opened, or you know, definitely, I remember you know getting up with some friends and going down the scope and. You know, seeing uh, seeing scope be packed or or the field house there. So you know, definitely the one constant thing here has been the uh, consistent support there of uh, Lady Monarchs and the um, and the men's program. Yes, sir, no doubt. And um, 
like you said, they they used to play in the scope and right. Odell and Coach Coach Jones used to play there. So I'm excited for them to get a game under their belt in Chartway Arena and right. to have the fans right there supporting them. Yes. Well, hey Jason, uh thanks for uh thanks for coming on and uh you know uh see you at the uh at the home games and uh go monarchs. Yes, sir. Thank you for having me and uh go monarchs. See All you right. there. All right. Thanks again. Yes, sir. Thank you.